Hi scholars, hi families, happy Tuesday. Today we are gonna do an end of module five review. You have been working so hard on module five, learning about shapes, three dimensional shapes and telling time. And now we're gonna wrap it all up and review together. After this video, after we um, go through all of this together, you're going to take out a, um, sorry, you're going to go onto Google Classroom and take the quiz that's labeled end of five, end of module five review. So first we're gonna review together, then you're gonna go on Google Classroom and take us a, a small quiz by yourself to review and show how much you've grown your brain since we've been learning about all the awesome things in module five. Let's get started with our review. We, you do not have um, this paper, but you do not have this in your packet. So what you can do is take out a separate piece of paper and a pencil and follow along with me now. Go ahead and find a piece of paper and a pencil, pause the video and play when you have both of those items. Nice job. Let's get started. First, we're gonna look at number one. Let's read the problem together. Finger in the text we're reading on two, one, two. Is this shape a triangle? If it is, write yes on the line. If it is not, explain why it is not a triangle on the line. So you're looking at A, B, C, and D, and you are gonna write um, whether or not it's a triangle by writing yes or no. Go ahead and pause and write this on a separate piece of paper now. Nice job, you solved on your own, now let's solve together. This shape has three sides, so let's count them. One, two, three. Are all the sides connected and closed and touching? Yes, that means this shape is a triangle. This shape over here, let's count how many sides it is. I'm looking at shape B. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven sides, twelve sides. Does a triangle have twelve sides? Agree or disagree? No, it does not. So we know this shape is not a triangle. I'm gonna write no because it had more than three sides. You can choose a different reason if you had a different one too. Let's look at the shape down here. We're looking at shape C. Shape C has one, two sides. How many sides does a triangle have? Shout it out. It has three sides. It has. So that means shape C is not a triangle. Right, no, don't forget to include your reason. Let's look at shape D. It has one, two, three sides. Those three sides are all closed and connected. That means shape D is a triangle, right? Yes. Double check your work with mine. If you got this nice job, let's keep moving. If not, fix your page now and join us when you're ready. Let's keep going. We're gonna now look at number two. We're reading number two, just like we do at school together on two, one, two. Circle the attributes that are used to describe all cylinders. So we're looking for the attributes or the characteristics used to describe all cylinders. When I say an attribute that you think is used to describe all cylinders, I want you to write it down on your page. Let's read them together. And when you hear one that sounds like an attribute that all cylinders have, you're going to write it on your page. Get ready. 
we're reading right here on two, one, two. Cylinders can roll. Go over here. You can pause if you need to write. Cylinders are hollow. Pause if you need to write. Cylinders are made of paper. Pause if you need to write. Cylinders have two flat surfaces made of circles or ovals. Pause if you need to write. Let's go over the attributes that are used to describe all cylinders together. I'm going to circle the ones that are used to describe all cylinders. You need to write them down on your page. So make sure that you have the ones that I circle written down on your page. Cylinders can roll. Agree or disagree? Yes, cylinders can roll. Cylinders are hollow. Agree or disagree, this is used to describe all cylinders. No way, no way. Some cylinders, like the one that I showed you earlier, had things, can have things inside of them. So that is not used to describe all cylinders. So I'm gonna put an X over that one. Let's read over here. Cylinders are made of paper. A cylinder does not have to be made of paper. Cross it out. Cylinders have two flat surfaces made of circles or ovals. Yes, that's true. What makes a cylinder a cylinder are the two surfaces on the top and bottom that are um, circular or oval shaped. Let's keep going. If you need time to write, these two um, attributes down, go ahead and pause and write them down. Let's do number letter B together. We're gonna do this the same way. So, so if you hear an attribute that's used to describe all regular prisms, all rectangular prisms, you're going to write it down. Here we go. We're reading right here. Rectangular prisms can roll. Pause if you need to write. The faces of a rectangular prism are rectangles. Pause if you need to write. Rectangular prisms have six faces. Pause if you need to write. Rectangular prisms are made of wood. Pause if you need to write. Good, you should have written the attributes that describe rectangular prisms on your page. I'm going to go over them with you now. Rectangular prisms can roll. No way, no way. Rectangular prisms are not able to roll because they don't have a curved surface on them. The faces of a rectangular prism are rectangles. Yes way, yes way. Gonna circle that one. That means the this one that I've circled, you need to write it down on your page if you don't already have it. Rectangular prisms have six faces. Yes way, yes way. Go ahead and circle that. Write this one on your page. Rectangular prisms are made of wood. Are all rectangular prisms made of wood? Agree or disagree? Shout it out now. Disagree. Not all rectangular prisms have to be made of wood, so we know that that is not true. Cross it out. If you need more time to write, pause your video now. Let's keep going. We are going to go ahead and skip this question, so don't worry about that one. We're reading number four together. Match the time to the correct clock. We are going to read letters A, B, C, and D together. Then you're going to match on your own. Your voice is on. You are reading on two. One, two. Ten o'clock. Ten thirty. One 
o'clock, 3.30. Draw a line, actually, sorry, on your page, draw a digital clock showing the correct time for A, B, C, and D. Good. Now that you've done that, I'm going to draw lines to match the correct time. You make sure that you wrote the correct time for each, for A, B, C, and D on your page. So let's start with A, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock looks like this right here. Make sure that's what you wrote for letter A, 10 o'clock. 10.30. 10.30 looks like this. Make sure this is what you have on your page for 10.30. 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock looks like this. Make sure that's what you have. 3.30. 3.30 looks like this. Make sure that's what you have. Pause if you need to fix it. If not, let's keep going. Number five, we're reading the directions out loud. Your voice is on in two, one, two. Write the time on the line. You're gonna look at clocks A, B, and C and write the time on your piece of paper. Go ahead and go. So that means your video should be paused so that you can look very closely at the time. Move my Great, now that you've done that on your own, let's do it together. I'm going to write the time using numbers. You can use numbers or words, that's okay. Number, letter A. We are looking at the hour hand first, it's pointed at one. We're looking at the minute hand next, the longer one, it's pointing straight up at o'clock. That means that we are at one o'clock. Okay. Letter B, checking the hour hand, the shorter one first. Hour hand is pointing at six. Minute hand, the long one is pointing straight up at 12. That tells us o'clock. That means that we are at six o'clock. Letter C, hour hand is pointing in between one and two. Remember that if the hour hand is in between two numbers, you choose the smaller number. You choose the, exactly. So it's in between one and two, one is smaller than two, so we choose one. Now we look at the minute hand. Minute hand is pointing straight down. Straight down tells us 30. Straight down tells us, good. That means we are at one, 30. Make sure you have all these on your page. Let's keep going. Great. Now we're going to read the directions to number six. Then you're going to pause and solve on your own. Let's read together. Your voice is on in two, one, two. Draw the minute hand. Draw the minute hand so that the clock shows the time written above it. On your page, you can draw a circle and um, draw a clock to the best of your ability, then draw the minute hand for each of these clocks. So make sure you have the hour hand pointing where it should be. Um, then play the video when you're done. Cool, so that might have taken you a little bit of time. Nice job drawing a clock on your own. I know it's challenging, but you got this. Let's look at letter A. Letter A, the time tells us that we need to show 4.30. My hour hand is pointing in between four and five, but I know the smaller number is four, so I know that it's four o'clock, four in the hour four. And I know that we need to be at 4.30. To get to 30, I know that I need to point my minute hand pointing straight down. I need to point my minute hand pointing straight, pointing straight. You got it. Let's draw the minute hand now. I'm going to use my red pencil and draw it straight down, pointing at 6. 
Raise your hand if you drew your minute hand pointing straight at six. Nice job, you've got it. Now let's look at letter B together. Letter B wants us to show five o'clock on this clock right here. Our hour hand is already pointing at five. Great, now we need to draw the minute hand. If we wanna be at o'clock, should we point the minute hand straight up or straight down? What do you think? Shout it out now. That's right. We need to be pointing straight up. So let's draw our minute hand. Pointing straight up to tell us o'clock. Nice job. Let's keep going. We're going to read the directions to letter C. Then you're going to solve on your own paper. Draw one line to make this rectangle into two squares that are the same size. Pause, draw a rectangle, then cut it into two squares of the same size on your page. Nice job, let's solve together. I know that if I wanna cut my rectangle into two squares of the same size, I need to go straight down the middle. We got it, there you go. That's what your rectangle should look like. Let's read letter D together. Circle the words that make the sentence true. Your voice is on, reading on two, one, two. One square makes up, here are your two options, one half or one quarter of the rectangle above. One square makes up one half or one quarter of the rectangle above. Write the words one half or one quarter on your page. Cool, now that you've done that, Let's look at um, this question a little close, a little more closely. So in this rectangle above, we have two squares, one and two. We have two equal parts, one and two. That means if we have two equal parts, do we have halves or quarters? Shout it out now. We have halves, we have so that means one square makes up one half of the rectangle above. Make sure that you wrote this, the, these words right here that I've circled, then below that, write the full sentence. One square makes up one half of the rectangle above. Good, let's keep going. Letter E, reading it on two, one, two. Color one half of the rectangle. What shapes were used to make the rectangle? Pause, draw this re rectangle and color one half of it on your page. Nice job, let's do it together. One half of the rectangle, that means one of the two equal parts. I'm gonna color mine as best as I can. Mine might not be as neat as yours, but I'm trying my best. Now the second part of the question says, what shapes were used to make the rectangle? Right, what shapes were used to make the rectangle on your page now? Good, I see two shapes that have three sides each. One, two, three. One, two, three. That tells me that I am working with two triangles. So I'm gonna write triangles. Good, let's keep going. Letter F says, color one fourth of the rectangle. Pause, color one fourth of this rectangle on your page now. Now that you did that, let's read the second part of the question. What shapes were used to make 
the rectangle. First, what I should see on your page is one fourth, that means one of the four equal parts colored in. Should look like that. What shapes were used to make the rectangle? Raise your hand if you think we use circles. Raise your hands if you think we use triangles. Raise your hands if you think we used a pentagon. Raise your hand if you think we used a rectangle. That's right. We used four equal size rectangles to make one big rectangle. Let's count the four rectangles together. We're counting one, two, three, and four. Those are four equal size rectangles used to make one big rectangle. The word rectangles is spelled like that. If you need to fix your spelling, go ahead and do that now. We're moving on, pause if you need to. Great, last question. You have been working so hard, you got this. We're gonna read it together, then you're gonna pause and solve on your own. We're gonna start reading on two. One, two, color one fourth of the circle. The dot is in the center. So this dot right here just helps um, tell us where the exact middle of the circle is. Draw a circle on your page, cut it into fourths and color one fourth. You got this. Nice job. Now that you did it on your own, we're gonna do it together. So I am going to take my um, a line and draw one straight down the middle going up and down. Then I'm going to draw one down the middle going side to side. My lines are not always perfect, but I always try to make them as straight as I can. Great. Now we need to color one fourth. That means we're going to color one of the four equal parts. Your circle should look something like this. It doesn't matter which fourth you chose to color, as long as you chose to color only one. Nice job, scholars. That was really challenging, and I know that you had to work really hard to solve all those math problems on your own. I'm so proud of you, and I'm so impressed with you. Don't forget, in two days, we have our first ever first grade Zoom party, and you can even bring a special toy to show to all your classmates and friends. All of your teachers will be there. We might even have some special guests. So make sure you're completing all of your work this week so that you can join us for a Zoom party on Thursday. Awesome job, scholars. Talk to you soon. Bye.